dear all, dear guests. Uh, also on behalf of Annette Hoffman and Gerhard Wolf, I'm honored and pleased to welcome you at the second talk of the lecture series, Aesthetics, Art and Architecture in the Caucasus, hosted by the Constitutional Institute of Florence in collaboration with Georgi Chubinashvili National Research Center for Georgian Art History and Heritage Preservation. Last week, we had an opening lecture by Mariam Didebulidze that was recorded and will be available on Chubinashvili Center YouTube channel shortly. Lecture series takes place on Tuesdays and will last until mid-July with the participation of the most prominent scholars in the field. Today, our guest speaker is Professor Nina Cicinadze, who is a senior research fellow at Chubinashvili National Center for Georgian Art History and Heritage Preservation from 1990, and an associate professor at the School of Arts and Science of Ilya State University since 2006. Nina Gijinadze obtained her doctoral degree in 2004 with a doctoral dissertation entitled Historical and Artistic Aspects of 11th, 13th century Georgian icon painting. During 1994-2007, with different fellowships and grants, she conducted her research in many uh, leading institutions, as like Dumbarton Oaks Research Center for Byzantine History and Civilizations in Paris, University of Athens, Central U European University mm -hmm. of Budapest, also University of Oxford and Freiburg University in Switzerland, where she also delivered a blog course on medieval art in Georgia. She specializes in medieval Georgian and Byzantine art and visual culture. Her research covers a wide range of issues dealing with dev devotional arts and their ideological dimensions. Images, power, and royal artistic patronage are other topics of her scholarly inquiry. She is an author and co-author of several books. Among them is an icon, an Art and Cult, published in 2014 in Tbilisi, Medieval Georgian Icon Painting, published in 2011 in Tbilisi, Greece Beyond Greece, published in 2008 in Georgia, Medieval Paintings in Georgia, published in 2014 in Athens, and Georgian Christian Art, published in 2010. Her current research project focuses on patronage of monastic arts. So now I think we are all looking forward for our uh, speaker to talk on royal icons of medieval Georgia. Nina Cicinadze, our virtual floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Irine, for such a um, beautiful introduction. With small remark, I am um, not associate professor, but full professor. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so glad to see you. Uh, first of all, I, I'd like to um, thanks so much uh, host of this lecture series, Annette and Irene, and of course the um, Professor Wolf and all our colleagues from Florence Institute, from um, Freiburg University, from Switzerland. And um, in recent decades, uh, thanks to your efforts, thanks to your kind attention, and collaboration is possible to meet today. And um, it's, your, um, it's your merit, let's say, that in recent periods, interests from the Western scholars are noticeable um, increased. And um, I'm glad that today it's a real, it's a real honor for me uh, to have this opportunity to share some observations uh, with you. And I'm looking forward to um, feedback because um, actually it's not the um, completed research. I just want to offer some observations, some ideas concerning so-called royal icons and making of the cult. Okay, uh, now I can, um, can I share screen? I am. 
Yeah. Okay. And just a second. Okay. Do you see? Yes. Do you see the screen? Okay. Yes. Uh, well, in his will, God serving and God protected king of the Abkhaz, it's quotation, Kartvels, Rams, and Gaths, King David IV, 11, 18, 9, 11, 25. You see here his 16th century fresco uh, portrait from the Latin monastery from, of 16th century. In his will, he says, I donate my rubies, precious stones, and pearls to the icon of Hafuri Virgin. You see her next to him. With his will, King David laid the foundation for the cult of this most celebrated icon of the Virgin. The icon named after the monastery, after the monastery of Hahuli in town, Southwest Georgian Principality. And most of you have seen, um, and even not, not only once, I think, this beautiful church. So uh, this icon was transferred to the monastery of the Virgin founded by the King David IV in 1106, uh, founded near his capital Kutaisi, Western Georgia. So I know that most of you worked on these topics and um, know very well this uh, information, but as far as this, this is public lecture and probably for younger scholars, this data, this information is necessary. Um, so this uh, monastery was designed, this monastery was designed as, um, as dynastic mausoleum uh, by David. Um, and uh, let me show you uh, the entrance, the um, gate, uh, which is situated south at the southwest part of the monastery. Now you enter the main entrances from other side. And here is his grave slab. And actually, he is not lying here anymore. It's um, symbolical, so representation of his uh, grave place. This is interior with the famous mosaic composition of glorification of the Virgin in the cult dated uh, by the early 12th century. After its transfer to um, after it transferred to the monastery, King Demetra I, son and heir of David IV, commissioned. Here he is. He is depicted in Upper Svaneti in Matsvarishi Church of the Savior. And this is inscription accompanying this um, composition. So girding him with sword of David. Um, this Demeter uh, commissioned a splendid mound case, huge triptych for the enamel icon of the Virgin, which incorporates 115 enamels of various times and provenance, and is studded with numerous um, precious stones, gems, and pearls. We do not have any documented evidences about the Hafuli icon before it's transferred to Galati, but it is rather plausible that it was a well-known devotional image, um, pathetically perceived as protector of Bagrationi in Tao, as Hafuli Monastery was, was founded by David III Kuropalatis, 930-1001, um, and this is um, so his image is um, carved a figure inserted into the uh, daisies. Uh, let me show him. This composition, as you know, is on the east part of the south facade. And this is the stella uh, with his depiction. OK. And um, so it is highly probable that this icon was um, protective icon of uh, David Koropalatis, one of the powerful rulers who prepared the foundation for unification of Georgian lands of principalities by the end of the 10th century. Okay. Uh, Hachuli, Hachuli Monastery, Great Laura was dedicated to all Holy Mother of God. The lack of documented evidences about the icon provokes speculation about its provenance. But unfortunately, he said no reliable and well argued views are expressed about the date or place of production of this icon. Any attempts to link it with um, uh, marriage, link it to the um, diplomatic gifts, 
uh, of Byzantine court, and especially there's big temptation to retrace its um, origin um, and to link it with the um, marriage of um, Maria Martha, you know, the aunt of David, the builder who was um, consort of two Byzantine emperors, but nothing indicates, no documents, no written evidences attest to um, such provenance. So leaving apart this provenance, let me continue. <laughs> My main goal actually is the retracing, reconstructing the building of the cult of this icon. Uh, the transformation of the Hafuli image into the royal cult icon, which was perceived as main protector of medieval Georgian royalty, is documented by various Western, uh, sorry, written resources. The spiritual and ideological dimensions of the Hafuli Virgin is revealed in the inscription of the triptych running across the lower borders, open wings of the triptych. Uh, so it's the, the inscription, it is well known and published several times in uh, English, in French. Let me offer my own translation of the text. Uh, so it's an ex extensive Yambic inscription in Georgian Uncheo script as Tavroli reads, like you who in, in the old days, by grace of God, father, blossomed, O queen, David, offspring of David, devoted his body, soul, and church to the Virgin. And new Bezaliel, Solomon, and the son and owner, Dimitri, uh, revealed your young, your image resembling the son to the world. O Virgin, be eternal intercessor before Christ. The text glorifies the Virgin and links her with the church of Galati and Georgian rulers, David and Demetre. The creation of precious mount case for the Virgin icon is compared to work in the text to the workmanship of biblical Bezaliel. The Metre is referred as New Bezaliel, who embellished the tabernacle, as you know, and the Ark of the Covenants of Exodus 31. The reference is also made to Solomon and his temple, biblical kings who are symbols of unification of nation and strengthening of the faith, were appropriate models for rulership of David and his son and the Metre. Uh, the inscription also stresses common descent of the Virgin and Bagrat Bagratids uh, from Prophet David, since, as you know, the Georgian royal dynasty of Bagrationis claimed their, um, their provenance from the biblical house of David. Uh, these Old Testament allusions were, were well exploited, devising Byzantine ideological system, and it suffice to um, remember presentations of um, David, uh, I mean the silver repuse uh, plates from Cyprus depicting, um, depicting David um, in, with features of Heraclius. Uh, this inscription gives new meaning to the image and establishes genealogical links between Georgian rulers, Old Testament kings and the Theotokos. The inscription has a strongly pronounced ideological message elucidated the role of the devotional image of the Theotokos, which is perceived as manifestation of the power and status of its royal patrons, David and Demetre. Uh, the establishment of the cult of Hafuli icon was manifested by rich donations made by David, uh, as I already mentioned, followed by creation of a spectacular setting triptych by Demetre is acknowledgement of the role of the Hafuli virgin as a protector of ruling dynasty. Mm -hmm. The Georgian monarchs continued the royal patronage of the icon in the subsequent centuries. Most striking manifestation of the royal devotion is described by the anonymous historian. And uh, the title of this text is, um, so uh, histories and eulogies of monarchs uh, dated by the 13th century. And this text, this historical narrative um, deals with life of Tamar and her father, Georgi III. So after her victory in the Shankori battle in 1195 against the Eldiruzid dynasty, Atabak states of, uh, in Azerbaijan and North Iran, King Tamar, David's great granddaughter, quotation, donated, ah, here she is. Okay, uh, quotation, donated the banner of Khalif to the great monastery of Hafuli icon of the Virgin as her great grandfather did. And um, please pay attention that Gelati Monastery is mentioned as great monastery of Hahuli icon. 
not Monastery of the Virgin, but particularly stressed in her name, Hachuli, Monastery of Hachuli Icon. This act acknowledged the heavenly assistance and support of royal deeds, as well as divine intervention in the battle of Georgian king against the enemies. Uh, Tamar's grandson, David Narin, 1247-1293, in his charter, uh, delivered um, in 1272 or 73, refers to Hachuli Virgin as his protector. He donated the estate of the Hachuli Virgin for his commemoration and made provisions concerning candles to be lit in front of the icon. In the following centuries, other rulers provided donations of various kind to the icon as well, lands, exemption from taxes and different precious gifts. Um, suffice to mention Alexander the Alexander II in the 16th century, King of Mereti, Rostov, early 17th, 17th century and so on. I argue that the key for the understanding of the special status and royal patronage of the Hachuli icon lies in its subject, more exactly in the iconography of the Virgin and its prototype. Uh, these issues are more or less um, presented in my um, papers uh, published in the Museum, in Iconografica, and in my uh, presentations delivers in various um, in various uh, during various conferences. Uh, the center, but this is more extended version of my ideas about this icon. Uh, the central image of the huge triptych. Most of you have seen in Treasury of Georgian uh, Museum of um, Fine Arts. Its size is two meter to one meter 47. Central part is gold, is made from gold, uh, central part of, part of the triptych. Uh, so wings uh, gild, gilded gold and silver alloy electrum. Uh, the central icon is stripped uh, of its original cladding. To our days, only Nemod face slightly turned to, to the left and palms of the Virgin uh, are preserved. The Virgin has depicted with her hands in the gesture of supplication. And um, I would say that the placement, the arrangement of the position of her hands is still disputing uh, by specialists. It is suggested that the rest of the icon was executed in Repuse, the Repuse sheathing of the lateral wings of the original triptych, if it uh, really belongs to the original triptych, um, decorates outer faces of the lateral wings. But unfortunately, uh, the icon is exposed in a way that you can't see this earlier silver, uh, silver parts. The supplicating virgin a visual formula of her intercession has strong uh, eschatological overtones and is directly linked with the salvation. This type of the Virgin, entitled as Agio Soritisa, is traditionally associated, here she is, uh, 12th century seal, so you have, you, you see the caption. Uh, traditionally associated to the Hagia Soros, holy reliquary of Hakopratia in Constantinople, where the precious Christian relic, a girdle of the Virgin, was, uh, was housed. Although Agia Soros could also refer to Blaherna reliquary, um, uh, which was um, housed okay, in Blaherna, which has a um, Maphorion of the Virgin. And you see here famous um, Georgian, um, famous icon uh, painted by Georgian uh, priest monk Yone Tohabi with these two um, Virgin uh, praying in supplicating Virgin. Um, so why I mentioned the position of the importance of the arrangement of her hands, because so you see here two different um, iconographic versions of the supplicating virgin. This is Agia Soritisa labeled, while this MFT. And this, this is really important, but we'll never know which one, uh, to which one belongs Kahuli, unfortunately. However, for now, I will follow tradition, uh, traditional attribution of Agia Soritisa to Halkopratia, let me briefly outline the history of Halkopratia and its Marian relic. The church built in the fifth century by the Empress Verina, at least tradition uh, said, traditionally uh, the church is ascribed to Verina. And this church you know, has been rebuilt by Justin II in the sixth century. Halkopratia, as it has been demonstrated by numerous um, publications and study, was a place of celebration of the Annunciation and the Nativity of the Virgin, presumably from the seventh century. Typical, the typical of the great church and of the ninth, early 10th century and the ceremonies 
of constant porphyrogenitus tell us about processions from Aya uh, Sophia to Halcopratia on this feast. Uh, and Patriarch performed services during uh, this feast uh, in the presence uh, of Emperor. Theodore Lector, 6th century church history says that already in the 6th century, a weekly procession to Halcopratia dedicated to the Virgin was established by Patriarch Timotheus. According to Sirio Mango, Halcopratia girdle first appears in early 8th century. He had in, in uh, written uh, sources. He argues that the girdle was simply a accompanied piece of the maphorion, which was brought during the reign of Leo I, 457, 474, from the village near Nazareth. Another zoni from Zela Amasia was brought to Constantinople about 942. And you know Limburg's Tarotech, most famous, um, one of the most famous reliquaries, has both girdles, uh, pieces of it. The cult of the uh, Relic of Halcopratia was promoted by sermons in post iconoclastic period. Uh, most known uh, probably is the um, sermon of um, Germanos of Constantinople, who um, wrote this sermon in Zona. Uh, then George Nicomedia in late 9th century um, celebrates this um, uh, composed canon in the Feast of the Girdle of the Virgin. And Patriarch Eusinius, um, 907 912, prized girdle as well. Regarding the relics, um, uh, should be mentioned that there are uh, several quite dubious testimonies ascribing um, this uh, relic to Georgia, particularly um, famous Georgian scholar uh, Grigo Peradze has co collected um, Latin sources. Um, about Georgia we find very, really very contradictory information in Latin sources. And the contacts between Latins and Georgians in 13th, 14th century was in Holy Land. And one of the um, authors, um, Felix Fabri uh, for 1480, 1483 says, the Georgians who are also called Nubians and are most generally known as Christians of the cincture. Uh, cintura, yeah, cincture, yeah. Uh, another uh, another um, piece of information uh, is dated by 1474. Comes from Zebald Eiter. There are various kinds quotation. There are various kinds of Christian in the temple of Holy Sepulchre, and Catholics, the Greeks, the Armenians. So there is a huge list. The Christians of the cincture and three other kinds of which I forgot the names. Uh, then Jean de Bouvier also in 15th century mentions uh, this uh, same connection with the um, Georgian church and um, Gerdo. And um, most um, extended information concerning this relic is found in 19th century letter written by Nino Dadiani, daughter of King uh, Georgian last King Georgi uh, XII to Russian Emperor Alexander I. The letter is dated by 1806. And so she offers as a gift this piece of uh, relic of um, Virgin's girdle, but um, gen generously um, Alexander refused and returned to the to Nino Dadiani. Uh, and uh, she explains that um, explains the provenance, and she connects uh, this um, relic to uh, to the niece of Romanos Arhiros who was married to um, Georgian King Bagrat IV. So all these evidences have rather dubious character and can't be taken into account at this stage. All these evidences need further scrutiny and um, so some additional um, arguments. For our discussion, however, it is rather important to turn to the function of the Argyrosurite site. Nancy Shevchenko, in her famous study on, liturgy, uh, on icons in liturgy, argues that Argyrosurite could be the Sinion Prismeia, the banner of intercession, mentioned in the Typicon of John II from Lenos for the monastery of Antokrator, composed in 1136. The Typicon, as you know, uh, describes one of um, my beloved sources. <laughs> the Typicon uh, describes the weekly ceremony prescribed by the Tetor for the commemoration in Wallic icon, the banner of intercession, which ended in Hagia Soros, or um, presumably in Halcopratia. This assumption is supported by the frescoes of Sopochani, 1260-1265, where the translation of the relic from Hilandari to Sopochani of the first servant, King Stefan Nemanja, is accompanied by an icon of the Virgin Agios Oritisa. 
Thus, the function of the Virgin of Yosoritisa was appropriate for King David's monastery, which was quotation, his eternal rest, resting place and burial place of his children. The royal, although there is um, there are another suggestions, uh, another identifi identification of the um, uh, banner of intercession as Eleusa, but uh, I strongly believe that Agio uh, Soritisa must be this uh, banner of intercession. The royal commemorative context of the Virgin Agio Soritisa it, is attested uh, to another um, to another icon of the Virgin, uh, which was in the monastery of Hobby in West Georgia. Uh, the um, original painting, the painted face is lost. This is a 19th century realistic painting, but most precious piece is preserved on, almost intact. Uh, so I skip the um, uh, size and so on. And uh, you see here the inscription runs on the lower edge saying Christ, most holy mother of God intercede before Christ for the soul of King Leon. King Leon is um, identified with Leon III, ruler of West Georgia of Abkhazia, 957-967, uh, and accordingly the revetment of Icon must have been created after his death, so before 917. The icon was the icon uh, was perceived as one of focal objects of veneration since in the 13th century, unfortunately, I don't have a picture of the back. The back was reverted with silver revetment, uh, with silver sheath, um, depicting cross of Golgotha erected on the fourth tapped base with Sigla Jesus Christos Nika, accompanied by the commissioner's inscription. Uh, it states the inscription that the back was reverted with the silver during the reign of David Narin, 12th, 45, 12, 93 by Bedan Dadiani, Eristavi, and Mandato Tuhutsesi. So uh, Eristavi are home local governor, while Mandato Tuhutsesi, high dignitary, uh, high service, high position uh, in medieval Georgia, and um, these guys were responsible for internal affairs. So Beta Dadiani and his wife Hwashak are um, commissioners of this uh, sheathing. Presumably the icon was embellished with the cloisonné enamel, en enamels. You see them, some of them are missing now. Um, and it is quite logical thing that uh, these additions, uh, this embellishment was added uh, during uh, the, um, to, during the um, commissioning of the back um, of the reverse revetment by Dadiani. Uh, what is more striking that in the 7th century, 17th century, so the cult of the icon uh, has quite a long history and in the 17th century has been created triptych. Unfortunately, I don't have the whole picture of entire triptych and all the central part, I found all the central part. And you see uh, here, uh, it's interesting that travelers who visited the monastery of Hobby in late 19th century, early 20th century indicate the place of Leon's icon at the right side of the chancel barrier. And this is the place where uh, Hachumi um, Virgin uh, has been kept in Gelatin. Creation of the triptych for Hobby icon, its display in prominent place in the church near the sanctuary, in a way reminds um, uh, attitude towards Hachumi Virgin. Moreover, in the composition of the central part, in the spandrels, you see here this relief, um, relief from um, rosettes, let's say, which resembles the um, decoration of Hahuli icon. Georgian historical narratives and iconographic tradition permit to assume that together with memorial connotation, the Agia Soritisa icon acquired additional symbolic meaning, uh, the royal protection in battles. I will back. I will come back to the to the if if we will have time enough time. I'd like to go back to this relic of, from hobby, but in the end, uh, okay. Uh, so the additional symbolic meaning um, of uh, Agios Soritisa could be proved with this icon you see on the screen right now. This is the Virgin of Wardzia. Uh, so, um, this icon has very strongly pronounced military context. Georgian Chronicles eloquently prized protective power of Vardzia Virgin manifested in military realm. 
so Vardia is a um, uh, famous monastery, rock cut monastery in southwest Georgia, started by Georgi III and completed by his daughter Tamar, King Tamar, King of Kings. Already quoted fragment from the 13th century chronicle histories and eulogies of monarchs stresses the importance of the miraculous image of Mother of God of Vardia. Here you see the entrance of the main church and let me show you the apes and the um, composition of donors, um, Georgi III and Tamar, but let's go back to this icon. Uh, okay, the chronicle stresses the importance of this miraculous image of Mother of God of Vardia in securing the victory of Tamar's army over enemies and royal triumph. The author claims that glorious reign of Tamar was conditioned by her quotation, diligent service to miracle working mother of God of Vardia. So that is enhancement of monastery and the rich donation to the monastery. Uh, the Virgin of Vardia is referred as most holy bringing of the victory. The Vardia mother of God uh, participate, participate in royal military campaign and ensures the victory of Georgian army in the Battle of Basia in 1202-1203 against Ruknadin, Sultan of Rome. Tamar, quotation, went to the church of the Mother of God in Vardia. They are praying before the Vardia Mother of God with tears in her eyes. The queen entrusted her with uh, David Soslan and his army, David Soslan and her husband. And the banner proved to be lucky. Tamar sent the army from Vardia and accompanied it barefoot, end of quotation. The author of histories and eulogies describes the royal protection and support to the Vardia mother of God. In quotation, from the very first clash and striking of swords, may a merciful God blessed those worshiping the cross and Vardia mother of God, augmenting still more the glory of David and Tamar. So the chronicle um, illustrates the ideological concept of the period of reign of Tamar, which gave particular importance. Uh, proclaiming that I, the idea that Georgia was appanage of the uh, Virgin. Uh, quotation, I am amazed how graceful is the Lord to his dwelling place and how Vardia, mother of God, protected Georgian people. End of quotation. Thus, the Vardia icon accumulates the protective power and grace of the Virgin and operates in favor of Tamar. Her assistance performed through icon is reserved to, to the royal couple. The same ideological vector is continued by hymn of the mother of God of Vardzi of Ioanne Shapteli, written after the Battle of Bassiani. The hymn prizes the Virgin and provides with an entire range uh, of the orthodox theological and symbolic interpretations of the Virgin. The hymn, written after the brilliant victory over the Seljuks, reinforced the authority of Tamar and strengthened the position of Georgian kingdom as a significant Christian power in the region. So there are also um, some legendary histories about miracles performed by Virgin, and let me offer one of them. Uh, so it's the 13th century during the Mongol invasions, one of the Mongol um, intended to destroy Vardzia monastery and the Vardzia virgin, um, stuck, uh, so, and he was stuck by thunder and burned. Uh, quotation, in such a miraculous way, the virgin saved the kingdom of Georgia. So unfortunately, the celebrated icon has not survived to our days, but in the uh, Museum of Art in Tbilisi is an icon known as Vardia Virgin. You see it on your screen. Uh, see, yeah, the name comes from the village in Imereti, Vardia, and um, where presumably was Metochion of Royal Monastery of Vardia. Uh, so you see the supplicating virgin, uh, well, yeah, sorry, this time. So there is a late medieval architectural complex dated to 16th century, but to my knowledge, this complex is not, uh, uh, is not um, sufficiently studied yet. The Virgin Agio Soritisa is depicted in half length, uh, turned to her left, and her painted image of, yeah, the painting is of um, realistic 19th century Russian manner, let's say. The original painting is lost, yeah. Uh, the repousse revetment, let me show the details, uh, the character of um, ornamental pattern as the interchanged, um, interchanged frame, you see plain uh, segments and then um, ornamental segments. So these features um, 
allow us to date it by the first half of the 13th century. The uh, appellation of the Virgin of Vardia is also recorded in this applicatory inscription on the reverse of a small, heavily damaged painted icon of the Virgin of Dios of Ibiza inserted into the small triptych from Ibiza, 14th century. Unfortunately, I don't have this icon because during the decades, it, um, it is still under um, conservation uh, process. Uh, so certain Abashidzes, the commissioners of the revetment of the reverse of the icon of the Virgin addresses their supplication to the Virgin and Vardia, you know, the family. So the insertion of the icon into the triptych indicates on either importance or both importance of the icon and its prototype. The creation of the triptychs for venerable images is a well attested practice, at least in medieval Georgia. Uh, thus, conclude the uh, good, yeah. Thus, um, considered visual and textual evidences lead us to suppose that King Tamar's icon depicted the Virgin of Yosoritisa. Um, at least, um, I think so. <laughs> the underlined military context of Vardzia icon demonstrates the defensive power of the Vardzia uh, of Virgin, which on its turn turn could be linked to the relic of Halkopratia, her girdle. The protective power of the girdle is stressed in the hymns and sermons of Patriarch Germanos, uh, George of Nicomedia, and Joseph the hymnographer. Two 14th century inscriptions addressing to the Virgin of Arzia provide additional proofs of the importance of this image in, uh, in, in following centuries. One of them is a supplicatory inscription belonging to Ivane Atabak, the local governor in Samtre, uh, mid 14th century, who, as it becomes clear from the text, built and refurb refurbished or renovated or so, renovated probably. Uh, refectory in Vardzia, and he asks the Vardzia Virgin for intercession and protection. Uh, in, this, uh, this, in the second inscription, uh, belonging to certain Murban Quintichizde, um, executed about 13, dated by 1350s, high dignitary at the court of King David the Ninth, uh, who started construction of defensive wall in the fortress of Tmovi. Tmovi is not far. Uh, from Vardzia, we read, by the assistance of Vardzia Virgin, I started building of the defensive wall and so on and so forth. Uh, King Tamar is also associated to the mirage. And, uh, and uh, let me show you. Okay. Yeah, here are uh, some um, photos, some images of um, Agiosoritisa icons. This triptych is archive, archival triptych. Mm, archival photo, excuse me, and you see Agiosoritisa mm, type is in the center. Now this icon from Tiberi Upper Swanetti, now it's in the museum. And um, underneath of the central image, central panel, you can see the um, fra fragments of some kind of relics, but it's hard to say what kind of virgin they, there was. Okay. Um, King Tamar is also associated to the miracle work. Do I have time or am I wrong? No, no, you still have time. Okay. King Tamar is also associated to the miracle working icon of Christ from Ancha, a monastery uh, in Klarjeti, south of Georgia, modern day Turkey, founded before Arab invasion in 738, now completely vanished. By 8th century, it was an important seat of bishops and highly um, esteemed at the Georgian court. The painted icon of Christ of Ancha attributed to the 6th, 7th century by Shalva Miranashvili. And after him, I think nobody studied the painting actually. <clears throat> As it is revealed by the Georgian Asomtaruli inscription, let me show it, two line inscription, uh, says that. Um, the icon received its um, frame, let you say, uh, gilt silver frame, by, by order and donations of King Tamar. And um, this um, uh, say frame was um, commissioned by Bishop of Ancha. So inscription uh, says, um, by order of Queen Tamar and with her donation, um, Ioane, okay, uh, ordered this um, frame for protector of their reign here, Tamar's reign here on the earth and forever. 
Repuster frame constitutes from the wine scroll foliate ornamentation with inserted holy images. In the central part, you see the uh, Etimacia flanked by uh, archangels. And uh, on the vertical parts, uh, you see the supplicating um, Virgin and um, John the Baptist. And uh, the bottom frame um, displays um, head apostles, Peter, Paul, and St. John the Baptist. Uh, the inscription mentions also uh, the name of the master who made the frame, Becca Opizari, and Opizari, Opiza is another um, famous monastery, influential monastery in Clargetti, founded in the 8th century. Uh, the icon of Christ in the, and the history is um, absolutely amazing uh, of this icon. Uh, the icon of Christ now is, makes part of, makes central part of the triptych. Uh, which was made in um, between 1308, 1334 under patronage of Atabax, governors of Samtsvem. In the 18th century, setting of icon has been renewed and precious stones have been added. So there are several parts added in 18th century. And the figure uh, of Pantocrator and the frame and hello, uh, the background um, are works of 19th century. So we have here the material traces, let's say, <clears throat> of veneration of this icon, at least during uh, 700 years. Ioan, the Bishop of Ancha, uh, who together with Tamar is associated to the uh, promotion and establishment of cult of um, Anchis Hati, icon of Ancha, uh, he composed, he dedicated a hymn to the icon, a liturgical canon in acrostic saying, a uh, fearful icon of Ancha is prized by Ioane of Ancha. He eloquently prizes Anchishati and its miraculous power. The Anchishati is perceived as a powerful defender against enemies who, uh, quotation, enemies like ferocious lions menace us, horrible icon, defeat them as you are our power and strength. Uh, end of quotation. Uh, the whole text is based on the orthodox teaching about images. Ioana ascribes innumerable miracles to the, la, to the icon of Ancha and calls it an icon of the incarnation. The hymn com comprises doctrinal meaning of veneration of images and quotes words of Basil the Great that veneration offered to image goes to its prototype. The history of Ancha icon before Bishop Ioana embellished it is quite obscure. The hymn of Anchishati claims that the icon was brought from Hierapolis Syria, where Keramion was kept, to Clargeti by Apostle Andrew, and thus uh, stresses its apostolical character. Uh, Ioan abounds icon with St. Andrew, since it was claimed that Apostle Andrew preached Christianity in South Georgia. This tradition is stemmed from the early Byzantine hagiography, uh, and I skip um, quotation of the sources, so you know well, Eusebius of Caesarea, Epiphanius, and so on. Uh, so, um, it is interesting that um, in Georgian tradition, this translation, translation uh, of the um, Acts of Apostle Andrew composed by Nikita David of Paphlagonia was translated by great Athonite father, um, Ephemius of Athonite by the uh, late 10th century. And um, he indicates in the title, Acts of the Apostle and collected by the Kingdom of Paphlagonia. Neither inscription of uh, Ioana nor him indicates the, that the image is the holy face. Uh, even the 14th century inscription says nothing about its miraculous um, Acheropoeta um, uh, nature. Um, but um, such definition in Ioannis' hymn as icon of the incarnation, glorifying icon and its provenance from Hierapolis are recognized as sufficient argument to identify this uh, image as Keramion. The inscription made by Domenico Catholicos, 1704-1724, on the outer surface of the lateral wings refers to Anchishati as an icon not made by human hand, which was brought from Edessa to Constantinople. This inscription brings new historical and symbolic layer, claiming that during Leo II Zaurians, the, images, uh, the image was transferred to Clargeti, uh, to Clargeti, to the Ancha Cathedral. Then he asks for protection. Mm, of King Vachtan VI and his consort, Queen Rusudan. 
So uh, the icon appeared in Tbilisi in 1664. Uh, merchant Amir Jan Ivan Gulishvili brought um, 10 uncles from Samtsche, occupied by Turks, and sold it to the medical authorities. And Georgi Gulgiri Amilahwari, who uh, embellished uh, parts of this. Um, um, of this treaty, it's interesting that he kept in his house for a while this icon. The reasons are unknown for me. Let me bring to your attention one more evidence of your royal patronage of the icon. Uh, there is an inscription on the Omophorion um, from the State Museum of Art, dated by dated back to 1358. Um, this homophorion embroidered, beautifully embroidered homophorion from Ancha, uh, made or donated by Queen Natalie, spouse of Bagrat I, ruler of Imereti, to Bishop of Ancha Theophili, Theophilus. So inscription um, proves that, um, yeah, inscription begins with dedication to Anchishati, uh, icon of Ancha. Thus, it is um, clear that in the middle of the 14th century, the icon is still in Ancha. Uh, so I leave aside the discussion, what was the archetype of Ancha icon? Because Georgian church tradition sees it at, uh, as a copy or even as an original Mandelion mm -hmm. or Keramion, but it's beyond of my discussion today. Uh, yeah, for my discussion, it's important that the icon uh, is uh, represented as an uh, authoritative uh, devotional image going back to the apostolic times. Such bond between the icon and Saint Andrew is an ideological concept aiming to reinforce position of Georgian church and its ancient apostolic roots during the reign of Tamar. Um, so last page. Uh, they considered visual and textual materials allowed to make some assumptions concerning royal icons of medieval Georgia. Uh, I would say that I, I have chosen for my presentation only uh, icons with pronounced uh, public cult. And um, so the cult of this icon uh, started, established and promoted by royalty. Uh, there are several other icons uh, which are um, so uh, linked to Georgian rulers. One of them is Tsageri icon of the Christ, and it is published in the volume um, dealing with the so Georgian uh, interactions, uh, cultural interactions in the volume edited by our colleagues from pre, -pre book. And uh, so I, I mentioned and I'm focused only on the icons which had, uh, let's say, um, greater dimension. <laughs> uh, so um, the monarchs of Unified Kingdom of Georgia tried to create their own royal cult icons, which were perceived as multifunctional relics. First of all, they were personal protectors and of royalty and their rulership. It is significant that instead of commissioning of new icons and their promotion as palladiums of their kingdom, both David and Tamar preferred to convert recognized and venerated presumably public images. Such appropriation of icons ensured inheritance of power and high authority manifested through the prote protection in battles, the real historical battles in the case of Vardzia icon, or um, let's say abstract or symbolic struggles uh, as claimed uh, by him of Ioane Ancha. Uh, the appropriation of cult images by rulers follows a um, similar scenario. Things embellish them, donate um, uh, to the icons uh, precious gifts, costly adornments, and hymns are composed um, to, for, to prize them. They, co they considered icons share one more tradition. They are displayed uh, and uh, they originate from the monastic, um, from the monasteries. Two of them are in the monasteries founded by royalty, by um, so Gelati by David and Vazia by, um, by Tamar. And uh, one, one of them, Gelati is dynastic mausoleum, as I mentioned already. To sum up, during the unified medieval kingdom of Georgia, icons were efficiently used by Georgian monarchs to promote their ideological concepts. The cult icons were interwoven into the royal visual rhetoric, linking uh, them with various realms. Byzantine, local history, local tradition, Holy Land, biblical history. It is worthy to mention that the cult of royal icons 
um, was not limited by the period of reign of individuals who established their uh, veneration. Instead, the rulers and nobility uh, in the um, following uh, period, in the consequent centuries, continue uh, veneration by leaving their own traces of the icons in order to enjoy their protection and intervention as well. Thank you very much. Um, if I have time, do I have time? Yes, if you want to yes. continue for a so, few minutes, maybe not too much. Yeah, yeah, just a um, few words about this uh, rather bizarre icon, <clears throat> which um, I have to confess I have not seen. It is kept in the museum, in the so repositories of the Museum of Fine Arts in Tbilisi, and I never have possibilities to, to see it. And um, while preparing this um, presentation, this lecture, I didn't have possibility to check some details because the museum is closed. And um, this icon traditionally is referred as Vlakerna icon. And it comes from Hobby, from the same monastery where the icon of Leon was kept. And according to tradition, you see here the textile. I can't see it, honestly. <laughs> and uh, it could be uh, identified as piece of burden or baforion. And uh, it is interesting that we have a chalice from Bedian, uh, 10th century, but it has a golden um, commissioned by Bagrat III and his mother. But 16th century uh, foot of this, um, of this uh, chalice, has an um, inscription of uh, 16th century made by um, Bishop of Ilori. And he says uh, that um, he dedicates uh, this foot to Laherna Virgin. So some association, some, uh, let's say, echo of this relic, either Maforion or Gerdo, is presented in West Georgian uh, tradition. Yeah. I don't know if someone can say more about this icon. I, I'd be glad and thankful. Uh, yeah, this is archival uh, photo of uh, Hobby Monastery. And um, this is the robe of um, Virgin, uh, which appears, it, at least it, document, it, it is documented from 17th century. And it was kept in Hobby as well. This is all. <laughs> Thank you.